Good morning, friends. Ammon Bundy here. Um, I'm coming to you to tell you a little story and to also uh, draw a little attention to an organization that I think is worthwhile and especially for what they are doing. Um, I had a gentleman stop by my home a few days ago by the name of Jason Casella, and he uh, is, helped found an organization called PANDA, and it's uh, People Against NDAA, which is National Defense Authorization Act. And uh, there's some links below uh, on this post that you'll be able to go in there and find more about the NDAA and how terrible it is and intrusive upon the rights of uh, each American citizen or anybody who visits the United States or even in other countries. And uh, so what's happening is, is uh, they are creating legislation, uh, the PANDA, the People Against NDAA, state legislation to keep the federal government from uh, coming into our homes and incarcerating us uh, indefinitely and uh, and basically oppose the NDAA. And uh, one thing that I wanted to say or I wanted to tell a story, uh, when I was first uh, incarcerated, um, I spoke t to my attorney and of course we were thinking that we would be able to get out on bail and that it wouldn't be an issue, we'd be able to fight this out, and take care of our families, uh, be with our families and uh, be able to get the truth in front of the court but do it in our, you know in our homes, uh, providing and protecting and caring and loving our families. And uh, so when my attorney asked the U.S. prosecutors um, if they were going to oppose Bell, the prosecutors began to actually laugh at him, and like he they knew something he didn't. And then they said, "There's no way that these men will get Bell." And he went as far as to say that. They were the most dangerous men, speaking of us, that we were the most dangerous men that they had ever prosecuted. And my attorney was shocked at, at the response of the U.S. prosecutors because he himself knew that that very prosecutor that was speaking these things had uh, prosecuted many, many wicked men, um, including one that killed a whole family. And somehow this prosecutor was saying that we were the most dangerous men that he had ever prosecuted. Uh, and so that was interesting uh, and shocking to my attorney and, and uh, to many others in the defense team and also among uh, our friends that were and family. Another story was uh, after several months of being incarcerated, it was uh, Ryan and I, my brother, Ryan, were down at the bottom floors of the federal building in Oregon. We were in a holding cell down there. And Judge Jones came and actually visited us in the in the holding cells down there. Now Judge Jones is an older gentleman. He's pushing, you know, 90. And they had give he's on meritus status or something to that effect. And they had give him, you know, assignment to basically take care of our detention. And so he came in, he pulled up a chair uh, in there, and basically it was a very interesting meeting. And uh, he wanted to basically sound like he wanted to just see us, and we kind of felt like the elephant man, like he wanted to come down and see us in our cage. But uh, while we were there, you know, we thought we could maybe uh, talk to him about, you know, our sufferings, our family's sufferings, and how we needed to get home to them and how he had the power to release us. And so as we began to do that and tried to share with them how we're just normal men and that we've been you know, mistreated and not allowed bail, well, he pulled out a piece of paper and he had it in his hand actually when he came down. And he said, well, and he went down and he looked at Ryan's name and, if you, and I got to see it because I was kind of sitting beside him. I could see it and it was a list of all the defendants in both Nevada and in Oregon all the people that were arrested and it had their names and a couple more information that I couldn't read and then off to the right it was color-coded there was red green and yellow and he went down to my brother's name Ryan and he goes over and he goes no nope. it says right here that I can't release you that you won't be released and then he goes down to me and he says no it says right here that you won't be released now this was before our release hearing 
Uh, and so some list that he had, you know, was telling him that we couldn't be released. And I, although I don't fully understand the NDAA, I can understand enough and to see of its wickedness. Uh, I also don't believe that we were fully held under the full power of the NDAA, but I also uh, have to believe that there was some portion or something was actually keeping uh, these judges and the bureau bureaucrats and so forth from, from releasing us when they really didn't have reason to hold us in the first place, as been proven through two different trials, and technically through four different trials. And so I'm feel a, a little bit of a need to uh, educate people the best I can about the NDAA, about uh, how it is an arbitrary law uh, given to executive powers and uh, does not afford us any constitutional rights or the right to do, including the right to due process, the right to a fair trial, the right to a public trial, the right to face your accusers, and the right to uh, the, the assistance of counsel and many, many other rights as well, including the right to bail. And so I want you to get educated on this. And the citizens of uh, Idaho, I would like you to understand this bill that's being presented that is uh, requiring the state to defend its citizens against these acts, uh, re uh, defend the citizens against federal agents coming in and kicking our, down our doors in the middle of the night, dragging us off, and uh, not giving us bail, and in our case, uh, for almost two years, and uh, incarcerating, uh, incarcerating us in circumstances where we won't, uh, can't be able to be with our children or our wives. And uh, I, I don't want other people to have to suffer that way. And I don't want to have to suffer that way again myself. And I see this bill as a starting point, I don't see it as, you know, the solution to everything. But I see it as beginning to to get the states to stand and defend the people, because that is the way this was design, designed. That is a Republican form of government. That is uh, federalism, where each government checks and balances the other governments in the defense and rights of the people. And uh, that's what's happening here. And we have to have the states and the counties stand up and defend against these federal bureaucracies that are truly destroying our liberties. And so I support this bill, and I ask you to get educated, contact the state representatives, um, those of you out of the state, I encourage you to do the same thing, to contact PANDA, uh, People Against NDAA, and uh, begin this stand. Appreciate it and thank you very much.